everybody. So like I promised, I'm going to show you how to, or I'm going to show you a few watercolor painting techniques. I'm going to start off by showing you a wash. So for a wash, what you want to do is get a piece of watercolor paper out, and you're going to want to wet the entire piece of paper. And I'm just using some clean water and a paintbrush to do this, but normally you would use like a squirt bottle or a rag. Next, I'm going to choose my background color, and I'm going to use a blue. And what a wash is, is it's basically a background that fades from top to bottom. So have your paper at an incline. Normally when you watercolor paint, you're working on an incline anyway. Um, and then you're going to go horizontally on the top, and you're going to add your paint. And I usually go, for something this small, I probably go about an inch down. And then I let the wetness of the paint and the paper do the rest of the work. So about that much, and then hold it at an incline and let it drip down. This next technique is called lifting. I use a dry brush to do this, but you normally would want to use like a rag or a paper towel. So to get rid of these, some of these little runny streaks, I just take my brush, a dry brush, or a semi-dry brush along, and what it does is it soaks up some of that extra moisture. And what you'll do is you'll just hold this up like this, and it'll continue to blend, and just let it dry. You can use a heat gun if you like this look and you want to keep it looking this way. Otherwise, just let it dry and it'll completely blend in and then you'll have a true wash. So then you'll have something that looks like this. This is a dry piece that I had just waiting. Now we're going to do a glaze. And a glaze is basically when you take um, a translucent pigment or dye over an already washed and dried surface. So this is already, this is the background that was already washed and it's already dry. So I'm taking some rose tea now and I'm just going over it and I'm making the basic shape of a flower or a rose I should say because that's what we're painting today this is like a half bloom rose so I'm just getting the basic shape and I'm even dropping a little bit extra color in there and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that dry and once that's dried you should have something that looks like this and now I'm going to show you how to do um, a dry, a dry brush technique. So for the dry brush technique, what you're going to do is pick out your next color. I'm going to use cherry limeade. And normally when you're watercolor painting, you go from light to dark. So I'm basically just going to outline the basic shape of my flower here. I'm not going to do the top just yet. Then I'm going to start to build um, the shading and the petals. I'm kind of going to separate the petals here. And I'm not being real careful about it. So now I'm going to do the tops of my petals. And notice where the water line is. I'm kind of going over and under. That's the look that I'm going for with this. So I'm just adding some darker parts to my petal here. And I'm kind of doing a little bit of scribbling because I kind of like it to look messy. And we're going to do some blending later anyway. So now while that is still wet, I'm going to rinse my brush and grab a number six round brush. And I'm going to drop some tattered rose onto this. And this is called um, dropping. You're basically just going to drop color into wet paint. So where I did my shading, it's still wet. And that's where I'm going to drop my color. Then I'm kind of going to use that wet paint to let it bleed together and blend all of this out. And you can even take more of your cherry limeade, which was the darker color, and drop that into there as well, like I'm doing now, just to kind of blend it all together. Now I'm going to rinse my brush, and I'm just going to add a little bit of moisture to this top area to let it bleed through, bleed up a little more. And that's called dropping. So now you want to let that dry. And after that dries, you should have something like this. And now we're going to do a dry brush technique, and I'm going to paint the leaves to my flower here with some olive vine. And a dry brush is basically um, plain pigment on your brush, no, no wet water or very little water over um, dry paint. So I'm just going to draw my leaves for this flower. And this is a rose, so I'm drawing the little leaves that are on the butt of the rose. So I'm just kind of getting the basic shape of what these little leaves look like. And this is a one, a number one round brush. I love 
watercolor painting. I took a lot of watercolor courses, including advanced watercolor painting when I was in college. And um, it was a lot of fun. I took oil painting and advanced oil painting too, and that was a lot, a lot of fun. So this is kind of, painting was always kind of my first love when it comes to a hobby or a craft. So right now I'm just getting the basic shape of my little leaves here. And now I'm going to do some dropping, but I'm doing it with the same color. And this is just going to, it's going to blend in. It's going to stay only in the wet areas. And it's going to help with my shading here. And that's Blake helping me out today. Now I'm going to just draw the little butt. He's smelling the glimmer mist. Stem. And I went a little heavy on that end of that stem there, but that's alright. And then I'm just going to continue to drop some of this paint into the bottom here. And then you'll just let that dry. And when that dries, you should have something that looks like this. And now I'm going to show you how to sort of blend it all together. And hang on, real quick, I just got to close these bottles of Glimmer Mist before Blake makes a mess. Now to blend it all together I usually will use um, like a water bottle. In this case since I'm using only Glimmer Mist for this I'm going to use Glimmer Mist. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over the top of this. I'm going to spray it. But before I do that if you want to you can go in and add little details to this like on the on the leaves I would basically just do a few layers of dry brushing to get some detail in there and I'm going to show you really quick what I'm talking about. So I'm dipping my little brush in. You can kind of define certain areas here and do a little bit of shading. And you would let this dry in between layers. So I'm just doing a teensy amount of shading here. That's my nose, Blake. So just a little bit of shading. Yeah. Give your leaves some definition. I don't know if you can really see that too well. And let that dry. I'm not going to let dry right now because I want to show you how you can blend this all together. So I'm taking a clear color. I'm going to use iridescent gold. Rose tea would work really good. So actually, I'm going to do that so I can show you how you can add color over the top with the Glimmer Mist. So I'm just going to spray the whole thing really lightly and see how that kind of brings all the color out and kind of makes it smudge. That's the look I'm going for. And you can do um, your lifting technique to get rid of some of these streaks like this. Um, but I personally, I like the messier, the messier it is, the more I like it. So I tend to um, just let it do its work. And there you go. There's some basic instructions on how to get that really pretty smeared watercolor look. Um, I hope you guys liked it, and thanks for watching. Make sure to check my blog at pieceofcraft.blogspot.com because I've got a bunch more fun projects to do.